Welcome to this episode of What Horse. We got a lot of stuff we're going over. Yes, sir. You know that, don't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot. There's a lot this industry is looking at. But uh, before we do that, I do want to send my condolences to Sonny McCarter and his family. Uh, they lost his wife. Of I believe they was married 76 years. Had uh, nine, four children, nine grandchildren, 16 great grandchildren and six great-great-grandchildren. They got married when she was 14 years old. Man, that's the Well, that's a, it's a long time, that but she'll be sadly time. missed by her family. Yeah, and she will. And I know Sonny's already missing her. Yeah, but Sonny's a good guy, and she was a good lady. Oh, yeah, sweet lady. Yes, ma'am. I guess you do your deal now. Yes, we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And JD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Remember the winner's circle. You got the gift shop, you got knives, you English saddles and accessories, English and cutback, Western and trooper saddles and accessories, complete line attack, bits, spurs, training aids, stable supplies, grooming medication, horse clothing, riding apparel, accessories, and footwear. While you're in town, go down to the winner's circle and tell them what a horse sent you. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. We've already been shot out of the saddle, you know. Yes, that, you? Mm -hmm. I, I, I posted that to where people. I've got calls this morning. Got one said, "Y'all gone? Let the kids do it." That, now. You were right about that. <laughs> they they do a good job, buddy. They sure do. But that that, that just uh, you lost it. Oh no, yeah, I, I that's right. We're, we're gone. <laughs> uh, I do have some uh, announcements to make. The Penny Royal is the 3rd and the 4th of March in Oak Grove at Oak Grove Equestrian Center in Kentucky. Call Jennifer Barr at 931-205-3493 or Marty at 615-586-3220. And they're not naming judges till the show. Walking Horse Trainers is the 15th through the 18th in Shelbyville, Tennessee, that's in March. 
and located at the Cooper Still Arena. Just renamed it. Yep. Call uh, Melanie Bryant at 931-639-6587 or D. Cantrell, 706-366-1011. Start time is 6 p.m. The judges, Brent Greider, Dickie Shrivener, and David Sisk. And uh, fast is named Derek Bonner, Wayne Dean, and Jamie Lawrence as their judges for the 14th and the 15th. So uh, trainers going to four days. Fast going to have a two-day, and the weekend before Fast, we're going to have a show in Lynchburg, Tennessee, on April the 8th, and it is to raise funds for youth competition. In other words, anything to do with the kids, equine, uh, a lot of people, equitation, paddy classes, Flat shot classes, both academy and medallion classes. And medallion classes are nice. Oh, yes, it is. But uh, I want to have a class at the break where if kids want to ride or adults, anybody that wants to ride a Tennessee walking horse, that uh, some people have already you know, been riding for years, but they've never rode a Tennessee walking horse. I'd like to have that class and let them, you know, it, according to how many you got and how many people you can get involved, but let them ride a horse. Yeah. Even if you have to lead it. And uh, I mentioned that to a friend this morning. He said, you know, he said, that's a great idea. He said, the spotted, spotted horse people have already done that a couple of times. That's so, a good idea. That's, I, I mean, I give a chance a person to ride a horse, ain't never been on a horse's back, and you never know. You, it might spark a fire in them. They might well, want to Well, some one. of them might have been riding one of them quarter horses. Yeah. Once they get on a walking horse, they're going to wonder why they was riding a quarter, quarter horse. That's right. No offense to the quarter horse people. I like all equine. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, facts are facts. You just got to, with a walking horse, you got a very, very smooth gait. All right, we've got a lot of video we're going over, Jerry. And you're going to be having to talk a bunch, bunch of this because we're going to try to make this an educational show. That'll work. So you put on your thinking cap. Yes. So we're going to start off with with a brand new two-year-old. Oh, everybody's showing them two-year-olds now, but right here is one from Lane Leverage Barn. And I can tell you right now, he's got some out there. Now, I'm only showing one, but you want to see some good ones? Just run by Lane Leverage. That's a good coat right there. It Real is a good coat. coat, and if I'm not mistaken, that's the one that Kimberly Walden and them just purchased. Okay. I believe I'm right. Could be wrong. If I'm wrong, bet you money. I get a phone call. <laughs> so that ain't him. But it, 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 he does have a lot of good that's, ones. I've watched yeah. him ride a, several good You got a lot of good ones at your barn. So we got, what else we got here? We got new horses and we got shows coming up. I do want to talk a little bit about this equine education show because it's youth equine show support. What we're going to be doing so people know we will have funding there for trainers like you and instructors that they can hold a seminar at their barn for a classroom of kids or maybe a small academy show. Yes. You know, Cedar Ridge up there, they used to have academy classes in there. Uh -huh. Where you're at now, Denali, that ring you've got is big enough for academy class. Yes. But we also want to bring out the medallion classes because I think they are very important. Tweba does those. Woe does the academy. And I have been told, and I've got to get back with uh, Jessica and make sure, but as long as the youth is a member of Woe, yeah. the points will count from the paddy classes. So if we sponsor enough of them paddy classes at current shows, uh, our youth can get points for the, you know, for the Woe Award, yeah. and that, that's, that's a good deal. All right, we got more horses. We got carding. And Jerry, what I want you to do is explain to people the importance of the carding and why you have blinders on. Well, the blinders is to make the horse focus and look straight and not looking all around. The carding, they help the horse push and help straighten up the back end. 
and to give them, you know, focus, used to noise and all kind of stuff, but I mean, but now you, when you got that cord, it's like somebody pulling something. It's like if you had a workout thing and you, and you know, you, you're helping your, your leg muscles and all that stuff. Carton is very good for a young horse or any horse just to kind of keep them exercise. Well, it does make them use that back yeah, end. Yeah, it make them use it back end. And, I and learn them how to shift their weight. Right. Well, I know the cart, when you're carting, you, you, you don't want them to see that cart because that'd scare them. Yeah. But uh, that's why with sci fi, we worked on teaching him to pull a cart without the blinds. Without the blinds, yeah. But a lot of people ride them, even with saddle on, because it keeps them from. Getting distracted. Yeah, but you see on that court right there, you see how that horse have to really push off his back right. end and pull. Well, I know a lot of trainers spend a lot of carting time. Yes. Nick Peoples is big on the cart and getting them to use a back end. So it, it's it's a good purpose. I've watched. Jerry That's Bain. one reason I, I learned that a lot from Dick when I worked over there with him. You know, he's he's very good at getting the horse timed up and everything else. Well, before I sold Tombstone, I would go out to Jerry Beatty's and I would cart him around the pasture out there. And uh, he, he was just one that would just sit there and flat pull, walk. And that, that's what's important. But I'm showing these videos for people so they can see different ways of training and where they can start. Yes. I know I've, I've watched Tony Edwards. He does a lot of carting. Uh, right there I am, that's Tombstone, and I used to cart him for 20, 30 minutes. It we, built up his standing, you know, on him and keep him tough. Well, when you, when you <clears throat> cart them and you do it and you work them, they'll get to where they, they've got a lot of get up and go, a lot yeah. of energy. And that's, and that's what you want. And you get them used to noise too, you know. That buggy clinging and stuff like that, and they ain't so shy from different stuff. But now, it well, helps them a lot. People seeing right here, it doesn't matter whether it's flat shard or performance. Yeah. The carding helps a horse a lot, a whole lot. Some of them like that cart better than oh, others. Better than others. <laughs> I mean, you can see some horses that show in the show ring that's showing that fine harness class and you they just regular horses, you know, they don't hardly get tied in that uh, under saddle, but when hey, you're on the back in Ted's image. In Ted's image, hey. you know, he wins a lot. He wins a lot in the cart and he wins a lot under the saddle. saddle. Yeah. But the carding is is a major, major yes. way of getting a horse good and broke, building their stamina, getting them to use their front end and their back, back end. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've got a tie down on him there. And that, that tie down there, that keeps him from getting his head too high up in the air, you know, make him stay focused there and won't get his head up too high. And I mean, that is kind of, and that tie down kind of help push everything together, kind of help balance him. Well, I've had some trainers, they, everybody describes it different, but they said it, it also helps them set their head. Yeah. I said, that horse right there, he's already got his head about right, yeah. about where it needs to be. That's one thing that I really enjoy. You know, pretty much on a, on a horse, on a walking horse anyway, especially a performance horse, it's all about keeping, if you can keep his head controlled, you got pretty much everything else will come on. Yeah. Two things you got to remember, a good shoe job and good teeth work, and head shape will help the horse. It'll follow. Yep. That's the main thing. It will. But through the years, I have videoed a lot, a lot of carding horses. And I'm talking flat shot, performance, you name it. I videoed it, yes. and I've always seen that every trainer to some point will cart those horses. Yes. Even even the flat shot, they get them out there and they'll cart them too. This is just training methods Method. for yep. different people That's right. for them to use. And we've got tie downs and blinders. Of course, right there you got a tie down and blinders, but both of those, one of them, to set the head and not get too high. Yeah. And the blinders to make them focus. Make them focus straight. The tie downs are like I was saying before, you know, it just kind of help them set the head so when you when they get out of gear and you kind of shake them a little bit in the mouth, the head won't go from one 
up too high, or down too low, you can kind of keep them pushed up against that tie down right there. I tell you what, what amazes me when you watch them. Sometimes the horse will fight it for a minute, and then he just relaxes. He relaxes, yeah, and falls right into gear, and you don't have to use it that much. See that right there is a good training gear that Eli is doing right there on that horse right there. Eli is one of our good young trainers. Yeah. Him and Jeremy, little Weaver. Yeah, he's, he's good. But now that's you know he just. He try to get that horse focused and get him all in gear. You know, just trying to get him into, they like a rhythm, they're like he's teaching him how to dance. It is trying to get him in rhythm right there. And every once in a while, you'll see that coat will fall into a good gear. Well, that's what the training methods are for, yeah. and that's what I'm hoping people realize these videos. These horses are not, nowhere near ready to go to the show, but it's steps that they go through getting them ready to go to a show or getting them ready to show somebody how good they are. You know, and, pretty much all these horses, the world ran champion horses that yeah. started off just like this right here. Or, or yeah. Every one of them started off like that with a tie down or some blinders or just, you know, and everybody got their own different training methods that they do. Everybody's you different. You know, they got, but now this, this is a basic thing for you go to 20 trainers and you'll see out of 20 trainers, you'll see 15 of them have a, a tie down or head blinders on one. Yep, they'll get them out there yeah. because they, they want them to work. And some horses are quicker to learn than others. Some of them, it takes a little longer. You see that horse right there. Now he's getting really, really good in the good gear. Eli is soft in the, in his, with his mouth and everything with his hands. Ain't pulling on him. You know, I love watching these horses when you go and you watch them. You catch them every other day. Yeah. And you start seeing the difference in them. And gradually, the next first thing you know, they're getting it done, buddy. They're yeah. ready for somebody to come look at them. And there'll be a lot of people visiting barns between now and the trainer's show or between now and the Penny Royal. Oh, yeah. There'll You're be a right. bunch of people. February, we'll see a lot of barns get visited just saying, what have you got? And they'll be looking for two and three year olds. But, um, that right there is, looks like he's going to make one. Oh, yeah. That horse getting ready to shift his weight and everything. I mean, he's he's coming on pretty good there. You go out to Lane Leverett's, and if, if, of course, Lane's a big coon hunter. Yeah. So they're out there jockeying to see when they can take off and go coon hunting <laughs> and when they can't. <laughs> but, you know, it's just like any... You go to any training place that train horses for a living. I don't care if it's thoroughbred, jumping horses, bear horses. You have training methods that they go through. Well, there's a lot of different training methods yeah. according to what you're wanting. What, you, horse want, to what do. you want the horse to do? And in the walking horse industry, we have a ton, a ton of different activities. Liberties. Yeah, you are. And right. we're going to show some more of that. But first, we're going to take a short pause for our sponsors. We'll be yeah. right back. Why well, each one? So uh, get your cattle off from here, sit yourself in the rooms. Want everybody to know the rooms of the games we're here today? So, 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 Mark Yoshi, so, Jamari, there's your black stud coat, but I am three time world grand champion world. I am Jose, is his daddy. There's opportunity. The bid, 27. Where you at, Mark? 26, 27, 27. Last call. Put it down to it, done. So, so, you got it, 2600. 2600 here, and then 56 and a half. 5600. Could have a better than 506. So, 5500. You bought a 5500. And so, 1100. Mark, call, take it. Call 1100. You bought. So, so, so. You break one. Break the next one. That's the real deal, guys, right here. Opportunity is knocking right here, Andy Johnson. Here's a horse to take it home. Right that said is but so, 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 you bought it. Six-time world champion in amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dowell at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. 
Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. More of What a Horse coming up. You know, I was looking at the sale ad. Anybody that is looking for a horse to start or one for trail riding, obstacle course, March the 18th, that's the sale to go to. Yes, that's those, a good sale. Those people, they put on a great sale. Yes. And, and they don't hesitate. They, they have some fantastic horses out there, so it's a good place to go. I'm going to tell everybody, Joe Paul is now belongs 100% to Shane Porterfield. Oh, that's a good he, deal. Yep, he bought it. Right there it is, ladies and gentlemen. March 18th, go out there, check them out, because they have a good sale. They have a real good sale out They'll there. They'll start it early in the morning, and they'll be going late in the afternoon. All right. When you come to the walking horse, and we're going to show, right now, we're going to show some equitation video. To me, this right here, we have a lot of instructors. This is a class that we need all of our youth to get involved in, boys and girls. Yes. Teach them the proper way to ride a horse. How and to sit a horse. Yeah. And mm -hmm. teach them different things because I'm going to tell you, uh, Virginia Stewart is big on the canter, and I am too. I love to watch a horse yes. canter, especially one that's got a good rocking chair canter. And once you see that good rocking chair canter, there ain't nothing like it. But all of our kids, these equitation classes, it gets them to think and, and bear down and really pay attention. Yes. Remember, we showed the video of little Allie Joe on her pony. Yeah. And the way she is all over the saddle. <laughs> but then she started with lead line, and that's where the equitation yeah, she started. Starts. Yes. Was teaching her the proper way to set a horse and looking straight up to his ears and riding. And now it has gone over into the performance and the yes. flat shot classes. And I noticed you must have uh, had a talk with Jeremy because Jeremy doesn't slump. No. Jeremy sets up in the saddle. Mm -hmm. Well, my dad was a big thing on that, on sitting up in the saddle now. He, he, but, I mean, a lot of people, you know, back in them days, that's what they done. They set up and, and everything had more of an equitation type. Well, I'm, I'm, I won't call his name. Yeah, I will. Sammy is the one that started that. He, yeah. wanted, he wanted to bend mm -hmm. over and look at the front feet so much. So everybody said, well, if it works for Sammy, yeah. <laughs> if it works for Sammy, dad, it works for me. <laughs> I'll do it too. But it does. When you watch the equitation, both the young and, and the adults, it's just, it, it's completely different. different yes. And you remember when they had the competition, the, um, uh, the um, equine competition for the trainers? Yes. Mm -hmm. You remember who entered? It wasn't but two entries. Was it? Uh, Blaze McCard and Herbert Derrickson. Der and they tied Herbert. I'd have tied Blaze just because she's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but both of them, and, and, and it's true, when you watch Herbert Derrickson ride, Herbert Derrickson, he sets up in the saddle and he goes to yes. it. So, and Blaze does too. So it, it's a good example of, it is a of good example. the adults. Not all adults bend over. Blaze is a good leader too. Yeah. I mean, she's a, she's a real good leader. Well, I, I enjoy the Herbert equitation is too. classes, especially when, when they have to go through their routine or the patterns that they go through. Yeah. But the main thing that I look at is the way that they're doing right there. It just, it's just good. It's good to see them set up in the yeah. saddle, but it, you have to go to classes. Yes. You have to. And dress your reins. That's what they're doing right there. It's a lot of things you have to remember. Well, they, they ask all different questions, and I've seen some that messed up one little thing and not addressing the judge and things, and they tie them down, and they're supposed to. But all in all, the equitation classes, and this is for people out there that want to get started. Find you an instructor. Tell her that you want to get started. Now, there's one of the best ones yes. in the business. 
Lee Stewart. And she she did a she does a great job, and she has had a bunch, bunch and of I winners, mean, a bunch of world champions and world grand yes. champions. Old Sam, he's checking her out, ain't he? Mm -hmm. Make sure she does it right. Mm -hmm. All right. I tell you what, anybody that, if you can contact me, you can contact Celebration, you can contact Walk North Report, you can call Tweba, the Breeder Association. Tell them that you want to get started riding. Ask them who an instructor is. We got all kinds of instructors yes. and some good ones out here that can teach you. And some of them even have horses that you can use. You don't necessarily have to own a horse. Some people have told me, well, I don't own a horse. You don't have to. They Cat have horses over in, yes. in Winchester, Tennessee. She's got over 40 students. I bet you half of them don't own a horse. Yes. All right. Now, here, here's one of my favorite activities. I love the extreme cowboy competition. Love it, love it, love it. And right there is one of the ladies that let everybody know a Tennessee walking horse can do anything. What was it they told Tracy? Ma'am, this is extreme cowboy competition. That's a walking horse. <laughs> what are you doing here? And then she proceeded to show them. Yes. Now, fellow people, this is this is something that's a lot of fun. Once you teach your horse to do these things, this competition here, next to none. Oh yeah. Remember when they had the competition over in front of the, uh, the celebration office grounds. at Celebration yeah. uh -huh. Grounds? That horse won it. it just had a different rider. A lot of. These are things that back years ago that you did on horses. Yes. I mean, your place you went was horseback. So, and that's all they're doing. They're just letting them horses go through that routine. The, yes. They didn't want them to get spooked by trash in, or in the bushes or anything. They wanted them to be able to go through and do move objects, open gates. And that side passing, get it done. I tell you, it takes a, a lot of work to work them horses and stuff like that. That's what you call training. Well, right it there. takes patience. Patience, yep. But I've also noticed this, and I talk to a lot of youngsters that have horses, own horses, and deal with horses every day. They love it. Yeah. They enjoy it. They go out and they watch it. They take care of their horses. And, and to me, that says it all. Yep, you are right. Olivia Bowles. I went out to see her when she was out on 64 and she was out riding her horse, flat shot. I went out there and uh, she said, let me show you something. She reached down, took the bridle off her horse, uh -huh. grabbed him by the manes, nudged him in the side, and took off. That horse went down around the pasture, ran through the pond, up the hill, jumped the log, went through the fence, come back, stopped right there, right beside me. And she did it all with nothing but her heels and the mane. Man. Hands on the mane. So horses, once they know what you want, oh, they'll yeah. take care of they'll you. They'll take care of you. You're right. And walking horses are smart. And they're fast, too. Yep. We've raced them babies. <laughs> Right there, you know who that is? Oh, yes. <laughs> Ronald, Ronald Young. Ronald Young. 
Now, buddy, he set a saddle. Yes. Now, he set a saddle. He was a good horseman. Yes, he was. I tell you what, this this is a great class for our youth. Oh yeah. To learn to do this, this would be another competition that I'd love to see in the youth division. Yeah. I mean, if they can rope cows and ride bucking bulls, bulls yeah. and bucking ponies, this right here, they'd fall right in line with it. And a lot of people don't realize, but Tennessee Walking Horse, when it comes to the endurance races, mm -hmm. they they can go a long ways, and their temperature, body temperature, will not rise as much as other breeds. Yes. And that's one of the things that they check periodically during the race. That one, there's the one I was referring, referring to in to, front yeah, of the celebration, celebration grounds. Because uh -huh. they had to dig a big hole for water, uh, all kinds of stuff to get it ready. Going for the cavalry right That's there. That's it. That's it. I'll tell you yeah. what now, Ronald could flat, and I mean flat ride Oh, yeah, he can ride a now, horse. Now, that was a good one to ride. Yes. There it was. Another thing is, and, and this is where a lot of people get started in sh showing and competition and everything. That's trail riding. Yeah. And trail riding a Tennessee walking horse is, is a luxury. Believe me. Now that's one of the trail rides that we had. I believe that one's in War Trace, Tennessee. And we used to have some great trail rides down there. They would carry us through places that you would not believe, but a lot of people get their first walking horse because they were on a trail ride, right, yes. riding a quarter horse or another equine breed. And they want to know, what's that one over there, that smooth one? What's that one? Just easy going there. And a lot of our show horses, I've seen them on trail rides. Yep. I had one lady that uh, she had a padded uh, pony. She took him on a trail ride <laughs> with the pads. Had the pads on. Yeah. There's Raymond. Now I want you to look there. Every one of those people paid a small fee to ride in a trail on a trail ride. And I want you to look at I've been on oh, yeah. them to where there's four or five hundred riders. And then <clears> I've been on them where there's only three or four. I wish this, if they could have that thing back again right there in oh, trades, I wish somebody that, would. We need a lot of our old trail rides. Bobby McNatt used yes. to have a great trail ride. Raymond Pennetall, he put on the one down in War Trace. And there's people that could still hold these trail rides, and there are trail rides at different locations. But these are things that, you know, that's why, I'm, number one, I want to have the horse show in Lynchburg. We used to have great horse shows in Lynchburg. Lynchburg yes. And the people would come simply because it was Lynchburg, Lynchburg Tennessee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wayne Carter was always one of the guides down there. I got yeah. to be the sheriff one time. <laughs> I didn't get to arrest nobody, but I still got to be the sheriff. Yeah. And 
Now it's getting the summertime, people. Yep. And it's time for trail rides. It's time for extreme cowboy competition. And it's time for obstacle courses, things like this. I tell you, it, it, that down there was great because they would, uh, they they let CJ put CJ on a uh, four wheeler, and they would haul him to different locations yeah. so he could shoot. Once we got there, he'd uh -huh. be there shooting. Shooting. Have you ever gone on the War Trace Help Trail? No, I ain't never been. There is one hill down there that's just, just about straight up, and about 75% of the people have to go up that hill. They that, that you, they just got to do it. Yeah. I ain't never been. Now, I've that been right to the... there, if I'm not mistaken, that right there is in Lynchburg, Tennessee, down at Bobby McNatt's. Okay. That looks awful familiar because they've got that long trail uh -huh. that leads up to the top of the hill. That's exactly where it is. <laughs> and the one war trace, I ain't never been on a trail ride, but I went to the <clears throat> what they had when everybody met up and they played blue bluegrass and all that. Well, stuff. right there, that's Bobby McDats too. They uh, the one in War Trace and Bobby would do this too. But War Trace, they would stop halfway through the, mm -hmm. the ride. You could stop for lunch, and they'd have chili, hot dogs, had music. Yes. I mean, you'd have everything under the sun and really have a great time out there. And then some people that didn't want to ride the rest of the day, they would take them a shortcut back to the home base. Yes. And the ones that wanted to go on, well, they'd just go on. Go on, yeah. So it, it was real, it was real, it was great, a lot of fun. Now, Bobby, you would go on a trail ride with Bobby and he would take you all the way through the trail ride. Then you come back to the barn and that's when you, you ate you and mm -hmm. served okay. food to everybody. But these people, I'm, I'm going to tell you, just you do not know the joy that you can have riding a horse until you go on a trail ride and experience it one time. Because I guarantee you, if you try it, yes. you, you're, you're going to go do it again and then again. And then a lot of those will keep going until the point that they've just got to enter the show ring. And they may enter in a flat shot class. <clears throat> and we're on there, we're on one big hill overlooking a highway that's leading to the other Okay. Hill on the other side. I like a lot of fun right there. Lord, I'm wanting to go right now. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Eichler goes on trail rides down there at, at the Rising Star, you know, over where she lives. Because I've gone down there and rode with her before. There's a bunch of us get together. Yeah. And there's a lot of people, they'll just say, let's go trail riding on Saturday. They'll meet up someplace and go. And go yep. Now, they and used go to go out. down here at, at uh, Normandy Lake, but people got to where they were sliding down the hill and tearing up the, the grass and everything, so they, they had to stop Sorry, that. Yeah. yeah, sure did. All right, from here we're going to go to obstacle course. And... Uh, this right here is something that they used to do. They do this with your mounted patrol out of Shelbyville. They're the ones that go to uh, like uh, Moon Pie Festival and things they have down in Bell Buckle. Yes. You'll go down there and there'll be horses all, all around there. That guy right there got that horse out of the pasture that morning. I remember him telling me that he got her out Washed her up and then brought her over here to go through the obstacle course. 
Now, these are things that you would run into on a trail ride that your horse would have to go through. Uh-huh. And every one of them is a little bit different. Uh, you may find a bunch of branches you got to walk through and things like this. That's what the tubes are for. But it's just a, it's just a good time. And then you got those that you have to convince to do it. Yeah. But he'll do it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't for everybody to go around it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're just taking time just to work them and get them used to doing it. Well, that's it. I mean, you, there's things that all horses are different. Some grab it quicker, some later. Yeah. But they will all eventually get it if you just give them time. That's why the brothers or the father and son over here, Todd. Yes. They walk them through it, let them see what it's like, and they'll walk them through it a few times, and then they ride them through it. Yeah. And that, that's what it's all about. Now, some of these, they, they just decided, well, we're going to see if they'll go through Do it. it. Yeah. And there was one guy that carried his horse to extreme cowboy competition that he had never done any of them. Uh -huh. But his horse did almost all of them. And a lot of it is the horse, when a horse trusts you, he's going to do a whole oh, lot yeah. more for you. Mm -hmm. People, a lot of people think, well, this is simple, but it ain't. No. Because some horses will take to it and some won't. You have to work with them and for a while. Yeah, and teach them how to do it. Teach them how to do it. Yeah. But it, I, I love to go on the trail rides. I love all that. It, it's, just a, it's just a tremendous amount of fun. Now, Jerry, there's one other thing, and this is, we're, we're going to show this video simply for one reason. Is from flat shot to performance. People in the industry do not explain our horse enough oh, to yeah. people. Now, right here is a flat shot, and you can see how it's walking, shaking its head. Young lady sitting in the saddle, she's just going right on. And this is one gear. Now, this is a gear that you can go on a trail ride all day long. Because that horse will flat do that all day long. He'll just walk on. He's not running. He's not really sitting back, taking it easy. He's just got a nice steady gait that he's going, which is, you know, a little bit faster than yeah. a trail walk. But he's it, it's with a flat keg shoe. Now, that's the first stage. And this is what they need to explain to the people. Oh, yeah how the gait changes as you change the weight of the shoe. Now he was, that filly right there, she could do that all day long. Just keep it going. That's a nice gear right there. It is, it's a beautiful gear. Yeah. And as you add the weight to it, you're gonna see how it enhances that gear. Yeah. And keeps, keeps her going straight on. And we had Woody Woodruff over there shoeing. And he was showing the people the difference. Now this is one of the first equine education days that I held. And we when we did the flat shot to performance. As you see there, there wasn't as near as many people there. Yeah. As it was the last one we had. But the last one we had was packed full of kids. Well, this is a good thing just to show them the difference on, like you said, about the shoes and teaching them, you know, why you put the different shoes on and the different gait that horse does. Well, if you look at this, we've already <coughs> changed the shoes once. Yes. And you can see the difference in the walk. Yes. The stride in the back. But if you notice, three feet are on the ground all the time. Mm-hmm. All the time. And he's still doing the same gait behind. Yeah. You know, still using his back legs the same way, but just a little bit more animated up front. That's it. But the back end's staying the same. Staying now, there's the Woody. Yeah. 
but he's going to put a bigger shoe on him. And when he puts a bigger shoe on him, and that's one thing I want to say, Woody Woodruff, I have never asked him to help show anything to kids, adults, whatever, that Woody Woodruff hadn't got in line. Him and Mac Deacle both. Yes. But Woody in 2004 in Wartrace, Tennessee, Woody sat there and showed people how to make a shoe. And he, it was hotter than Tim Buck, too, because it was right before their mm -hmm. show. <laughs> but now we've got a little bit bigger shoe on him now. And you're going to see how that gait changes. Now you have a, a plantation shoe, a heavy plantation yeah. shoe on him now. Yeah. But you and, see a little bit. And I will tell everybody, this is on YouTube. Yeah. From flat shot to performance that you can go watch and share with people. But you see how it's going? Head shaking. Yeah. The back end still the same. same. Yep. A little bit more shifting his weight a little bit, yeah. shaking his head a little more because the more weight, the more head going to shake and the more he's going to shift his weight behind. That's it. But he's still got that overstride in yeah. back, and the front end is still picking up. But here's an example of a horse that can go flat shod all the way up to performance. Oh, yes. And it's a good example. All right, now we're going to get a little bit bigger. Yeah. I believe that we went to park performance here. I think. I believe. It's been many years since we did that. But now they're going to change now from one. Yeah, that's a part performance, ain't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to go to the English saddle. This young lady that did this for us now, she could flat ride. They got, a little, they got a package on him now. Yeah. Yeah, they beefed him up to a package. That's yeah. why we're going English. But now watch. You notice they don't they don't have the action device on him yet, do they? Or do they? Yes, they got the action they device. They got it on there now. But now all the other ones didn't have no, no action no, device at all. They didn't have an action device. At all. And we have told people and told people and told people that our horse has got the talent. It's the weight that makes the difference in what he does. Well, you, this is like that right there. That horse head went up yep. another foot in the air. You there know, you go. You, shifting his weight, stepping off the ground, shaking his head. And that's why we tell people that the facts are show that the pads and the action device do not harm the, the horse. That's right. Period. And you no, know, regardless what all of them say, all that huckleballoo about what has to be done, that was done right after here in front of everybody. The only thing we did was change the shoe and put an action device on it. This is a very good educational video right here. Well, he, you can take that horse to any horse show and get a ribbon. Yes. Because he's, he's fulfilling the gates. Now, a little bit later, we're going to show you what the gates of a performance Tennessee walking horse are supposed to look like. And I sincerely hope that people start sharing and talking to people about what our horse does naturally. I, I, I love it when people question me. Oh, about yes. Because when they start with all this stuff, I can flat tell them right quick, no, that's, that's wrong, and I can prove it. Now 
He's getting it done. No matter what you say, that right there is our walking horse. Yep. We had Bobby over there. He was Bobby Richards. He was doing the, the announcing and talking about what yeah. was happening. And he named every, every time we changed. But I want people to realize that our horse is, is, does one thing natural. It walks. Yes. Y'all can say what you want to, but it walks. You've seen the back end. You've seen the changes. Educate people to our horse. And before I go any further and, and start getting upset, you need to take us to a commercial. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse, but I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411 and see if I can save you money on your communication. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. All right. Well, we've seen flat shot to performance. And I've told a lot of people that they can go to our YouTube page and they can see the video that we're fixing to show. It explains what a Tennessee walking horse, performance horse, is supposed to be doing. Yes. And it, the same thing applies to the flat shot. It makes no difference whether it's performance or flat shot. They're all trained to shake that head and walk. Western will hold their head a little lower. English hold their head a little higher. higher. Yeah. That's basically the only difference. But pay attention to this video and you will learn exactly what a Tennessee walking horse is supposed to do. In describing the gates of the performance horse in the show horse division, these gates will apply to all classes in this division, regardless of age or sex. The flat walk should be true, bold, and four-cornered. The horse should nod the head with every stride and bring each forefoot to the ground a mere second before the diagonally opposite hind foot touches the ground. The number one factor that separates the walking horse from all other breeds is their head motion. If a horse is not shaking his head, he is not walking. The foreleg should move straight, not crossing or winging with his hooves, breaking at the knees, and reaching forward in an elevated arc. The rear leg should follow through close to the ground, comfortable and overstriding the front tracks. They should be stretching, not squatting or cramping, with a lot of bend in their hocks. Notice the horse's back hoof up even with his front hoof. Stiff front or rear leg motion, stumbling, bucking knees, lack of rhythmic timing, pointing or favoring a particular leg, necessity for excessive pumping or bumping of the horse are not typical of the walking horse, and the judge must immediately excuse any horse exhibiting this type of motion from the ring. The running walk should be the same general motion as the flat walk, but with additional speed. The horse shall exhibit a smooth, gliding, overstepping, four-cornered gait with greater stride and accelerated head motion. The running walk should be a free and easy gait. 
Horses exhibiting an exaggerated, hesitating way of going with a tendency to point with the front feet are not in form. Twisting of the hocks or stiff-legged rear leg motion shall also be considered a deviation from the true running walk, and a horse exhibiting these ways of going should be penalized. The canter should be smooth and straight on both leads, not walking behind, but cantering on both ends with a rolling, rocking chair motion comfortably in hand. Notice the horse leading with his left front leg going to the left and leading with his right front leg going to the right. Exaggerated pumping of the horse at the canter is not considered good form. The walking horse should move freely in each gait and proceed in a smooth, fluid, rhythmic manner. At all gates, the horse should be flexed at the pole with muzzle slightly tucked. Any tendency to rack, pace, or other deviation from the true walk are not typical of the breed. The preceding mannerisms are not considered good form and shall be penalized in judging. All entries should be presented clean, neatly trimmed, braided, and in good flesh, presenting a healthy appearance. Each entry should be outfitted in clean and appropriate tack. The exhibitor of each entry should be neat in appearance, attired in properly fitting riding habits, and shall conduct themselves in a sportsmanlike manner at all times. A horse that has not performed all the required gates shall not be placed over a horse that has performed all gates. Pretty much tells you. That like tells the is. truth right there. It points it out. It is. And these these are all both of these videos are on the Water Horse YouTube channel. I suggest everybody look at them. Uh, then when you go, if you can tell if a judge is tied a walking horse or if he's deviating from what's supposed to be tied. That's right. It doesn't doesn't take. I made both my boys watch this video. I, I mean, think it, before it's a good all video form. before all judges get ready to show a show, they should go through that video and keep that in their mind on what you're they'll, looking at. They'll, they'll shoot me and you both then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We we have got some really good judges in this yep. industry that look at the horse and tie appropriately, and those are the ones that that I I support. Yeah. I, I look at them, and you you can tell. And nowadays, our people in the stands, a bunch of them could be judges because yes. they they know what a good horse is. And I know it's different from center ring than the stands, but they can still tell if a horse is walking. Or if he's not walking, walking, yes. What did the man say? If that head's not, not shaking, shaking, he's not he's walking. He's not walking. My dad used to say that all the time when I was growing mm -hmm. up as a kid. If that head ain't <laughs> shaking, you better get it to shaking. Got to have rhythm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's about all we have for this week, unless Jerry's got some more. No, mm -hmm. that's about all. That, about video, that last video sums it up now, about now the horses. You're going to go home and say, hey, boy, we, we got to do we this. Gotta do that. We got to do that. We got to show them somebody. horses that way. <laughs> All right, we'll see you all next week. See you later. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.